After about two hours, once you've turned the system into high vac, you would come back to make sure the pressure is in the right range for deposition. So you look at the iron gauge, which is over here. So as you can see, the iron gauge is reading 1.3 to the 10 to the minus 6, which is in the correct range. You want the pressure to be in the mid 10 to the minus 6 range. So that's what it is. And now, before we can uh, deposit and turn the power on, we want to make sure we turn the water on. The water is used to cool the crucible, and the crucible is heated by an electric gun. So to turn the water on, we have this switch right here. And we would turn it to flow in the same direction as the pipe. So this is how you turn the water on. And you can verify this water has been turned on by looking at this spinning wheel. So if it's spinning and the pipe is turned on, you know that the water is running. So if the pressure is in the right range and now the water is uh, turned on, you can turn the power supply on. So this is the main power supply. You would turn this on. And then you would turn the key to the on position. So these would all light up. These bulbs are out right here, but it actually is lit up. And then you would turn the high voltage on. So now you can program the thickness monitor. So this will measure how thick of a deposition you have. So first you do is you press start, then stop. Start, stop. And then you press reset. Then when it says ready, you can press the program button. So the only two things you change in the program are is the fill number and then level. So we go down all the way. So when we're at the fill number, we're trying to do titanium, so you put one. If you were trying to do copper, you would put two, and uh, so on. So fill number is one is titanium. And then next thing we change is the, the first layer. We only have one layer at a time, but we put one here. So those are the two things you change, these two numbers, the, the fill number and then the first layer. And those two numbers would match these. So you want to verify that you have the right number. So you would check the bulk density, which is 4.50, and the Z ratio, which is 0.628. So you can go check. So density is 4.50, that's correct. And then 0.628, that was correct. So now we know we programmed it right. So you would press program again. Now you're back on the main screen. So you just press start, stop. So now it's ready to measure the material when you deposit. So now what you'll do is you'll start the deposition. So the deposition is started by turning on the current. So the current switch is right here. So before you turn the current on, you want to make sure the, the knob is all the way to the left. That way there's no uh, jumping, starting from zero. So you make sure it's all the way left. Then you turn it on. So you, if you, you, you should know the, uh, you should start increasing the current slowly. You know your uh, target current level by looking at either uh, other people's notes or have your own knowledge or talk to staff. So titanium, usually people do at 0 0.06. So that would probably be three ticks on there. So we know that that's where the deposition is at. So we'll start increasing the, the current slowly. So this will fire the, the gun, which is gonna heat the metal. So we can look at the positioning of the beam with this thing. So you look inside and you can see the beam getting uh, heated. But how do you, what if the beam is not centered? You would use these buttons right here. The positions. 
of the longitude latitude positions. So you can turn the position of the beam. You, can't, you want the beam in the center. There's also another button called sweep. So this is how far the beam goes. And then this frequency button right here is how fast the beam moves. So we want to adjust all those to be right in the center and cover the material uniformly. So we keep looking inside here. Uh, when you do chrome, you, don't, you won't see it melt because it'll go from solid to gas without melting. So with that, you would watch the pressure change. So chrome absorbs moisture. So if you see the pressure drop, you know the chrome is uh, getting evaporated. But most of the other materials, you can see it actually melt in there. But also always check the reference and ask other people what the material properties would be. Or if you haven't done it before, it's good to watch somebody else do a material that you haven't done before so you can learn at what current and what it looks like to, to open the sh shutter for deposition. So when you think you're close to depositing, what I usually do is I lower the current. So it's a sequence of steps. You would lower the current and then you would, you would start the process and zero the scale and then open the shutter. So the shutter opens and that means the material being deposited can deposit on your sample. So it's those three steps. You lower the current, zero the scale, and open the shutter. And then as soon as it's open, you would turn the current back to its original power that it was melting at. So we'll, we'll try that now. So you follow the steps. So we'll lower the current, we'll start it, and then we'll zero the scale, and then we'll open the shutter and then we'll increase the current slowly. So you can see the deposition. So this is how fast is that depositing, answers per second. And this is how much has been deposited. So you bring the current back to its original melting level. You can see it's depositing at 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So we try to keep, in the beginning, we try to keep the current at around like maybe 0.4 angstrom per second. Then after you've deposited about 100 angstroms or 200 angstroms, you can increase the current. So your rate is now about one angstrom per second. So you can watch the rate here. So we're depositing at 0 0.7, 0 0.7 angstroms per second. And this is how much we deposited. So when you've almost reached the deposition amount that you want, so we're gonna go for 200 angstroms. So we wanna end it when it reaches 200. So we'll slowly start decreasing the current power. So when you're almost at 200, and then when you reach there, then you would turn the current off, and then turn the gun off, then turn the high vacuum off, high voltage off, and then you would turn the keys off, and then turn the main power supply off. So when you've all done that, you want to let the crucible cool with the water. So we let the machine and the water be on for about 10 minutes, and then we come back and then we'll turn, get a sample out. So now that the chamber has uh, cooled down, we're ready to open it. The cooling down period depends on your substrate. Uh, some materials might oxidate or some might uh, have a lot of stress and peel. So it depends on your substrate, I mean your material depositing, how much time you should cool. But a good number is about 20 to 30 minutes. Let the material cool with the water on. So now that the system is uh, cool, it's important to turn the water off before we actually open the chamber and vent it. So the same, turning the water off is the same process as turning it on. You would just turn this knob. So you would turn it to the closed position now. So now that the water is turned off, you, and you can verify that the wheel is not spinning, you can start venting the chamber. To vent the chamber, you need to close the high vac. So the high vac is this switch right here. So when we close it, we're gonna watch for the pressure change. So the pressure should actually decrease because what we've done is isolated. So originally the ion gauge was measuring, measuring the whole pressure, measuring the pressure of the chamber. But once we close the valve, it's measuring the pressure of the pump, which is less than the whole chamber. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close the uh, uh, high vac, and then we'll see the pressure decrease. 
So sometimes it doesn't close right away. If it doesn't close, you can call staff and they can help you actually close it. But as you have it, it just seems it just closed. So you can see the pressure has decreased from the original number. If you had heard that noise, that you can hear the valve close. So that valve has become a little, it's a pneumatic valve, so it's become a little sticky. That's why there's a delayed reaction. But if you heard the noise and then you watched the pressure change, now you know that high vac is closed and you can actually vent the chamber. So to vent the chamber, you would turn the vent on, which is right here. And you would just wait for the pressure to reach 7.4 to the plus 10 to the 2. And then you can also feel the air out here when it reaches that pressure. So we'll wait a little bit. You can see the pressure gauge. So you want 7.4 to the 2. So wait for that number. So once the pressure the, has reached AT atmosphere, which can be seen here, ready to open a chamber. You can also verify this by the air blowing out here. You'll feel air. That's the nitrogen being pumped out because it, the chamber pressure is equal to the outside pressure. So we can open the chamber. So we turn the vent off. So it's open, and now you're ready to unload your sample. And here's your wafer that you can take out. So you can remove the wafer and take it, and also remove your crucible. The crucible is over here. Inside here, you can see the. And then you would uh, close the shutter. And then you would bring this back down here. But also, you would clean this with wipes to make sure everything's clean. And, and then vacuum if it's dirty inside. We can bring this chamber down and put it back into high vacuum. So we're going to do that now, is we're going to lower the chamber.